This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these word art style logos using GIMP. And if you'd like to learn more about how GIMP works, be sure to check out the GIMP series, which is a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the major tools and features in GIMP, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get started here, I'm going to open up GIMP. Now, I typically don't use GIMP for logo design. I usually use something vector like Inkscape or Illustrator. But for this style of design, it really lends itself to something like GIMP, where you can use manual brush strokes a little easier than you could with the vector software. So what I like to do is I'm going to use GIMP to create the structure of this design, and then I'm going to import it into Inkscape to create a vector tracing later on. So as you can see here, I have my example image. I'll put a link to this image in the description as well if you'd like to follow along with exactly what I'm doing here. Otherwise, you could use whatever image you'd like. So the first thing I want to do now is create a new layer on top of this layer and create a silhouette tracing of this subject here. So I'm going to click on this button that says create a new layer and add it to the image. Click OK to leave the defaults. And I'm going to grab the pads tool, which is over here. And I'm going to zoom in over the subject here. I'm just going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a few times to zoom in. And I'm going to click to create points going around the outline of the subject here. Now they don't have to be exact, exact points that follow every precise contour of the subject here. We're not creating, we're not cropping out this image. We're just creating a very rudimentary uh, silhouette tracing of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and create these points real quickly and then I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so once you're done making your tracing and you have your point, your last point right next to your original point, what you want to do is connect those two together by holding control and then clicking on the first point. And that's going to close the path like there like that. And what we want to do now is create a selection from this path. So I'm going to press enter on the keyboard and it's going to create a selection. Maybe you can't see it on your screen, but there's now a dotted line going through those paths that we just created. And what I will do now is go to edit, fill with foreground color, and that's going to fill that in with black. Now we can go to select none to get rid of the selection. And I'm just going to grab, I'm going to click off of this tool onto one of these other tools like the move tool just to get rid of those uh, nodes on the screen there. And let me zoom out a little more. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the, of the original layer down here. And I'm going to create a white backdrop beneath the subject here just so we can see what we're doing as we create the individual letters. So I'm going to create a new layer. Click OK. And I want to fill it with white, which is the background color, as you can see here. If it's not, you can set your default by clicking this icon right here. That'll set the default back to black and white, respectively, for the uh, foreground and background. I'll go to Edit, Fill with Background Color. And I'm just going to click and drag this layer beneath the other layer so that it's behind the bowl image here, or the buffalo, rather. And what I will do now is I'm going to click on this top layer <clears throat> and create a new layer on top of that. And I want to bring the opacity of this layer down, maybe about 70%. Bring it down to like 24 like that. Then I want to take the foreground color and click on that and make that red. Click OK. And I'm going to grab the brush over here now, the paintbrush tool. I'm going to make the size of, about, size of it about 8 pixels roughly. You want it to be about this size right here. Maybe a little smaller than that. Maybe something 4 like that. That's pretty good. Uh, if you want to undo what undo your drawing like I just did there, you can just press Control Z on the keyboard. And what I want to do now is this part's going to take a little bit of manual eyeballing here. So like what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and manually draw letters where I'd like them to be in this subject here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the word buffalo within this design. And I'm going to start out right here. I'm just going to draw a rudimentary letter B like that. And again, this, this, what we're creating right here, this is just going to be a guide. These aren't the actual designs we're going to be using. So don't worry about this looking nice. It's going to look pretty ugly, but that's okay. I'll put the U right about here. I'll put the F right here. Another F up here. The letter A right here. And then I'll put the letter L over here and bring the tail of it out there like that. And then I guess I'll just put the letter O right here within the space of the, of the, uh, of the L. And that right there is what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the eraser tool, which is over here. 
I want to make sure I have a nice hard brush selected, this, this one right here, uh, Hardness 100. And I'm going to bring the size down to about, or up rather, to about six or seven pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this image a little bit by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I want to come back to this original, this middle layer right here and select that, the next one down, the one that has the subject silhouette on it. And what I'll do is to zoom in and out, like I said, just hold control or roll up and down the mouse wheel to move the page around. You could press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse like that. So I'm going to go and just erase the areas between these letters like this, just to create the illusion of those letters within the design here. And I'm going to put a little couple of dashes for the uh, letter B there. And I'll go over here and do the same thing for the letter U. I'll come over here for the letter F. Let me zoom out a little bit. Do the same thing over here. Put a line through there. Put a line through there. And maybe bring this one down. Same thing over here for this. I'm actually going to come in at an angle for this letter here so that it follows the uh, direction of the letter A there. Put that right there. Right there like that. Bring this one down. And then I'll do the same thing over here on this side for the letter A. And what, do you, what I like to do when I'm doing this is I, I like to zoom out a little bit and toggle off the visibility of the red letters on top of it to see how it's coming out. And if you can see, it's coming out all right. You can see the letters there. They don't look very neat and clean, but that's kind of the point of the design. It's meant to have a very natural sort of look, like it's like a hand-drawn design. Let me turn on the visibility of that again. Come back over here. take out this part of the letter A. And finally, I'll come over here for the letter L. I'll bring that straight through. And then for the letter O, I'll just put like a little dash right here. Now let me zoom out. Let me turn off the visibility of that layer. And you can see here, we kind of have, we kind of have our design pretty much set. Now what I like to do is you just go through and just clean it up a little bit. If you notice here, there's a little bit of a smidge sticking out there. I'm gonna hold Alt and just color that back in. When you have the, the eraser tool, Alt holding Alt allows you to do the opposite of erase. It colors it back in. So that's uh, one handy trick to keep in mind. And I'm just going to go through and just clean this up a little bit. Like over here, I'm going to make the corner of this rounded so that it looks more like a letter O. Maybe I'll come over here and put some more space in the uh, between the, um, the letter A legs right here. That looks a little better. Maybe a little more space in here. Maybe you'll do the same thing for the letter B. Just a little more, a little more space within that those negative space areas of the letter B. Looking better. Maybe a little bit for the letter U. There we go. And I'll just do the same thing for the letter O over here. Maybe I'll round the edges of this over here so that it looks more like an O. Nice rounded edges. Maybe I'll bring this to more of a point. And I think that right there is looking pretty good. I'm going to leave that as it is. Now what you can do now is just turn off the visibility of the white background beneath the uh, on the layer beneath that and you can see you have our transparent background here you can go ahead and export this as a png image and it'll have a nice transparent background like that you could even change the color of this if you'd like now <clears throat> once you take this design and bring it into uh, your, your vector software and create a vector copy of it it's going to look even better it's going to have like a nice clean crisp look to it i mean this looks pretty good as it is right now but if you really want to get that good finishing touch then i would recommend creating that vector tracing of it so i think that should do it for this tutorial that's how you can go about creating these word art style logos using gimp if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching